Terminator, who was pretty much signed up to play the role when you first heard about it? Well, when I got involved, uh, I remember they told me that it was O.J. Simpson was the Terminator. And I was supposed to play Reese. And then um, I was asked to have lunch with James Cameron and to talk about the movie and, uh, you know, let's just hope that everything goes well because uh, Jim needs to sign off for you to play Reese and to play the hero. And um, as I was sitting there and having lunch, for some reason or the other, I started talking more and more about the Terminator. What? Well, when I read it, it just happens to be that not too long ago, I saw the movie Westworld with Joel Brenner, who played a machine. And uh, he played this, the toughest of the toughest. You know, Joel Brenner is a fantastic actor. And he did the, played a fantastic, the, the, the toughest kind of cowboy and the shooter. And when he was in the bar, and I saw him, the way he acted, but there was, everything was kind of off because it was not like a human being, but you couldn't identify really, there's something wrong here, but you couldn't identify exactly what it was until later on when you saw that at night they took them apart and they fixed the machines. And I said, that's what it was. I knew the way he, his eye movement was, the way his head was kind of a little bit more jerky and every move was a little off. So I remember all that. And I was fascinated by that because I've never seen that on film, someone acting like a machine. So I told James Cameron, I said, look, there's this one thing that you got to make sure of is that, 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 that whoever plays Terminator, and I heard it's O.J. Simpson, I said, but whoever plays it, I said, you got to train them to be a machine. Not to act like a machine, to be a machine. He said, what do you mean? And I said, well, I said, for instance, I said, there's scenes in there with, with guns and weapons. I said, he cannot go and look down and have the magazine be put into the gun or look down when he puts the bullets into the magazine and all of this stuff. I said, he has, this has to be done like a machine. So therefore, he has to train himself blindfolded. He cannot see what he's doing so that while he's talking, he has to be going on and put it away, you know, just everything automatic. The way he steps on the motorcycle, there's not looking down on the stand to get the stand. None of that can happen. So I kept talking like that the whole lunch, very enthusiastically, like an expert. <laughs> so at the end of the lunch, he says, he says well, first of all, I totally agree with everything you say. He says, but I have to say one thing. I said, there is no one that will understand the Terminator better than you. He says, so therefore, I think, I think we're all in agreement that you should play the Terminator. I said, that Jim, excuse me. I said, I don't want to regress in my career. I said, because this guy only talks, says 27 lines. I said, I don't want to go backwards. I said, I just did Conan, I did this, and I did Conan number two. I said, I, I want to have the, the other part where there's much more dialogue and much more challenging and those. He says, trust me, I will shoot the character so that you're not only the number one villain that they've ever seen, but the number one hero. Just the way I shoot it, I know exactly how to do that. And I said, no, 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 no. He says, well, you don't have to answer now. He says, take your time. Let me know in the next few days. So, of course, I go home with it from that point on, or I thought about is visualizing myself as Terminator and then as Reese and all this back and forth. And then eventually one day I woke up and I said to myself, you know, he's right. It will be the most memorable character if it's played right. And I promised Mr. that I'm gonna go and study it and I'm gonna play it right and I'm gonna be the Terminator. Explain your idea for the Terminator to get a little drunk and your issue with I'll be back. Well, you know, I just uh, saw uh, 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 E.T. And I thought that it was a, such an appealing scene when E.T. goes to the refrigerator and drinks something and it happens to be alcohol and then gets all smashed and it's all over the place. I thought it was very endearing and very funny. So I said to myself, um, I would be funny actually if the Terminator, you know, being this machine, but he gets smashed a little bit drinking alcohol. But of course, I didn't thank as deeply as Jim Cameron did when he wrote the script. Because when you write a script, you really got to understand the character 
100%. Otherwise, you screw up. And so he came to me and says, Arnold, first of all, he says, you're a machine. Machines don't get drunk, OK? <laughs> so let's, but this is, uh, no one knows that we're having this discussion. He looked around always, and he says, and number two, don't tell me how to write my script, OK? I don't tell you how to act, and you don't tell me how to write. <laughs> so this is how we kind of settled that conversation very quickly. And the same funny. with the uh, I'll be back. Oh, yeah, we did, I'll yeah, be yeah. back. I mean, there was like a, a, but that was an argument in front of people. Because oh, Jim, I said, yeah, Jim I said that did to me, I'll be back. It just sounds weak. I say, I will be back. And he said, no, he said, just say, I'll be back. And I said, no, but when I say, I'll, this, oh, I'll, I said, it's, it's, it's weak. It does not sound like a machine. I said, I would say, I will be back. And he says, just say, I'll be back. God damn it, he says, don't rewrite my script. You know, just say it. You know, then we, we agreed that he would, um, shoot it, um, you know, do 10 takes and uh, let me choose the take. And that's exactly what we did. We then said it 10 times, the different ways, more dramatic, less dramatic, and all this kind of stuff, and then we picked one.